Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Box 13, care of Star Times. I'm a betting agent in my state where betting agents are legal. I'm one of the many who are being taken for plenty. I think there's something haywire, but none of us have been able to figure it out. Now, since you'd be a stranger here, we figure you'd have a better than even chance of closing. finding out how we're getting clipped. If you do, we'll pay. If you don't, maybe you'll have yourself an adventure anyway. My name is Bert Hendricks. Look me up at 6729 Sierra Way. Enclosed is enough money to take care of immediate expenses. Have a look, huh? <laughs> yeah, I had a look all right. Right into the muzzle of a nasty 25 automatic. back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, Much Too Lucky. Are you going to be going long, Mr. Holliday? Well, I don't know, Susie. That all depends. On what? On what happens. Oh, what could happen? Where I'm concerned, anything. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I get worried about you, Mr. Holliday. Sometimes? Most times. It's just like a nomination. Oh? Uh, what am I running for? Nothing, I just had a premonition. What's that? What you didn't have. I don't get it. <laughs> well, you work on it until I get back, Susie. I'm off to the races. The plane trip was quick and pleasant. And eight hours after I said goodbye to Susie, I was talking with Bert Hendricks, a big, nice-looking fellow, but with a worried look on his face. After we had introduced ourselves, Hendricks let me know what was putting the wrinkles between his eyes. Oh, it's got us roped and tied like a Christmas package, Dan. Uh -huh. How much are you losing? Plenty. Runs into four or five figures every week. Uh, maybe somebody's being lucky. <laughs> to be that lucky, a guy'd have to be born with a silver horseshoe in his mouth. Look, yesterday I paid off on a long shot at 40 to 1. The clip ran to the tune of 20,000. And that, as they say in books, is sugar with a capital S. It'd buy a lot of coffee. Anyway, we figure we're getting it the wrong way. Clip, bamboozled. Well, why don't you go to the police? With what? Troubles? That's not the answer. Mm. Have you tried to find out? Are you kidding? We ran ourselves into a lather trying to catch the angle. No dice. Dan, somebody in this town's plenty smart. Smart enough to know our boys. And that brings me in. That's right. You're a stranger. They won't take a second look at you. I caught your ad in the Star Times and played the bet. Well, here you are. Hmm. With nothing to do. How much do you want? Well, believe it or not, Bert, I do this for nothing. Yeah, I heard you say that before, but I don't get your dodge. My what? Your gimmage. Dodge, racket, angle. Oh. <laughs> well, I figure if the plot's good enough, I can use it in the story. Okay, but, but no dough? I'll tell you what, Bert. If I figure this, will you turn over what you'd give me to any charity I name? Here. Here's a blank check. Fill in the amount... I'll sign it. But try to catch the capers that are putting the shellac on us. Well, there's nothing to start on. I've got a job. Uh, they're smart. Plenty smart. What they win is over and beyond the run of luck or chance. Any ideas? Yeah. One. Oh, what's that? They got a guy with a crystal ball. <laughs> that the best you can do? Come out in the wire room with me. See if we can catch anything. Well, up front? Uh-huh. This way. And we're getting ready now for the third race of the day. The We've got a radio back here, broadcasting direct from the track. Comes over local station. Oh, and where are the bets placed? No mm, right here, or by phone. Mm, I see. And you take bets up until the time the horses are at the post. Mm, that's right. But well, once the race starts, no more bets. Uh, listen to the race. Now he's in place. We're ready. And they're off. Hiya, the Hi, Billy. How's it going? Somebody called up and got a century on party line. Oh, the 20 to 1 shot? That's right. Oh, Billy, this is a friend of mine, Dan Holliday. Hi. Hello, Billy. If party line wins, Bert. It's the fourth long shot this week that's paid off. Yeah, yeah, I know. And each one was bet on. Is that it? But heavy. I still say there's one of them guys that's doing it by telepathy. Listen. 
At the half that's mine, owned by half a length over cantilever. Rocket is third and falling back with old Joe. As party line still swings wide and moves up on the outside. Coming into the turn now with mine, owned by a head over cantilever. And moving up fast on the outside is party line in third. There Rocket he comes. Who made that bet on party line? Mike took the call. Okay. Get me to the name of the guy who made the bet. Sure. Right away. Sir. Listen to that. It's mine owned by a half over party line. And it's a driving finish with mine owned in front by a nose. Party line getting up the whip and moving up. Up and across the finish. It's party line by a head over mine owned. Oh, 20 to 1. Uh huh. And $100 a 20 to 1. Don't say it. Don't say it. Come on. Let's go back to my office. Oh, Dan, I don't get it. How can they pick long shots like that? Is it only long shots? No, no, not always. Sometimes it's the favorite, but it's always a winner. And I say no guy can pick a winner every race, especially every long shot. Come in. Want to know who placed that hundred on party line, Bert? Yeah. Here's the tab. Oh, her again. She's awful lucky. Yeah, too lucky. Who is it? Name's Vaughn. Terry Vaughn. Singer at one of the clubs here. She's done this before, huh? Yeah, she's done it before. 20 grand today, five last week. Why doesn't she retire and leave here? Well, she can. Look, Dan, we've got this betting narrowed down to about 20 people. 20? Yep. The most consistent winners. They never lose. Oh, a ring, is that it? That's right. But not one of them is ever at the track. You mean they, they just don't go? That's right, never. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> Neither do we. Oh, Billy. Yeah? This call from Terry Vaughn came in just before the horses were at the post, huh? Sure. We take bets up to the break. What are you uh, thinking about, Dan? Mm, I was just wondering if there was any way of getting advance information on a race. <laughs> you kidding? Not a chance. This is a business with us. Legitimate. On the level. We know every angle and dodge. There's no way anyone could know before the race that a long shot like party line was going to nose across first. Uh, you've got yourself a problem. All right. How about taking a slice of it, Dan? What I said about that blank check still goes. Mm. Okay, you've got yourself a boy. Good. I don't know where I'll start, but as they say in books, everything has a beginning. So, why not start with Terry Vaughn? Waiter. A oh, waiter. Oh, uh, yes, sir? I wonder if you'd deliver this note for me. Certainly, sir. Where to? Miss Terry Vaughn. <laughs> I'll see about it, sir. Uh, will this make you see any better? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, and tell Miss Vaughn I'm a journalist. Newspaper man? Yes, I, I guess that's it. You see, I'd like an interview. Well, I, I'll see what I can do, sir. I, I'll do my very best. I waited. I didn't know what Miss Terry Vaughn could tell me or wouldn't tell. But it was a chance. She didn't know me, so she wouldn't be suspicious. It was ten minutes later that the waiter came back to my table. Miss uh, Vaughn will see you, Mr. Holliday. Oh? How did you know my name? It was on the card you sent with the note. <laughs> Simple, isn't it, Dr. Watson? Uh, I beg your pardon? Oh, never mind. Now, where's Miss Vaughn? Oh, she'll be here in a moment. Oh. Okay, I'll wait. Yes, sir. Uh, glad to have been of service. I waited, and I'll admit the wait was worthwhile. Miss Terry Vaughn glided across the floor to my table, smiled $5,000 worth of teeth, tossed a million dollars in red hair over her shoulder, and put $10 million of the rest of her in the chair across from me. You're Mr. Holliday. You're Miss Vaughn. Mm -hmm. Your note said you wanted to interview me. That's right. Well, I'm flattered. <laughs> I imagine that's a fairly common situation with you. <laughs> what paper are you with, Mr. Holliday? I have a connection with the Star Times. Oh. Oh, you're a big city boy. Mm, I didn't know it showed. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to interview me? Oh, lots of reasons, Miss Vaughn. Name one. Well, I heard you were very lucky today. Lucky? How? Or uh, do you win 20000 every day? What does this have to do with an interview? Well, it's human interest stuff, Miss Vaughn. Very human and very interesting. I see. But uh, why pick on my lucky streak? Because, well, because it was so lucky. Oh, I've always been lucky. Oh, I can understand that. Oh, how did you happen to pick uh, party line today? I like long shots. Always? When I feel lucky. Do you ever lose? Sometimes. Why? Oh, I'm just asking. Mr. Holliday, this is a peculiar interview. Oh, I don't think so. Just pleasant. What paper did you say you were with? The Star Times. And what are you doing here? Vacation. When is it over? 
couple of weeks. I see. Well, Mr. Holliday, as far as I'm concerned, it's over now. Have a nice time. Oh, wait, I'm... I'm sorry. Please stay here. Why? I feel that I owe you an apology. For what? For being so curious. <laughs> all right. We'll forget it. Mm, let's do. Let's forget all about $20,000, long shots, and lucky streaks. And what shall we substitute? Terry Vaughn. Do you mind? Hmm. I don't mind if I do, Mr. Holliday. Well, it was a pleasant way to spend an evening. But when it was over, I was just as smart as at the beginning, which was zero. Maybe Terry Vaughn was lucky, but how lucky can you be? The next day, I met Bert Hendricks, and he had more trouble. Well, somebody did it again today, Dan. Not quite as big as Terry's play yesterday, but enough. Enough. One of the same 20 people you've tabbed? Yeah, one of the 20. If it weren't for the fact that it's those same 20 people all the time, it could be just luck. Yeah. Could be. You saw Terry last night? Yeah. You, oh, yeah, I saw Terry. And? A very lovely girl. <laughs> I wish I had her money. It's mine. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Bert. I don't have to ask if you've watched those 20 people. Oh, sure we have. They don't talk to anyone connected with the track. As far as I know, they don't even know anyone there. There's got to be a gimmick. Yeah, that's what I keep telling myself in the head. Look, Bert, let's try to figure it out logically. You say every one of those bets is placed just before the race is run. And that's right. And each of those 20 people picks a winner. Yeah. Not only with me, but with all the other agents who have the same setup I've got. And how could they get advance information? They can't. They've got to, Bert. Dan, we've been all over that. Yeah, maybe there's an angle you've overlooked. Okay, name it and I'll buy it. Mm. Is, there, is there any particular race or races they always bet? Hmm? What races do you lose the most heavily on? Wait a minute. That is an angle. You think of something? Maybe. Wait a second. I'm going to check. I think I'm right, but I'll make sure. Hello? Hello, Billy. This is Bert. Yeah? What race is being run now? Time for the sixth. Do you have any big bets? No. Were there any of the 20 on this one? No. Which ones did they hit? Third, fourth, fifth. That's all? Yeah, why? Nothing. See you later. Well? Third, fourth, and fifth. That's what I thought. Never the first, second, or the sixth, seventh, or eighth. Always the third, fourth, or fifth. That's right. But where's the gimmick? I don't know. But hand me the phone. Oh, here. Thanks. Now, oh, what's the phone number of the club where Terry Vaughn works? No, I don't know. It's in the directory. But why? Right, what's that got to do with this? Bert, I don't know yet. But I'm going to ask the lovely Terry Vaughn if she'll go out with me tomorrow afternoon. Afternoon? What are you getting at? Your money. I hope. Hand me the directory. And now back to Much Too Lucky, another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, I had an idea. Not a big one, and not one that made sense, yet. But I was going to play it. So the next afternoon, I met Miss Terry Vaughn for lunch. I arranged the time so we'd be together just about the same time the horses went to the post for the third race. We sat in a little cafe. I was really surprised that you called me, Dan. Oh? Why, Terry? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because you seem more interested in my luck than in me. Mm, the two go together. I suppose so. Uh, do you ever play the races? No, I, uh, I never have. But there's always a first time. <laughs> That's what they all say. Why do you ask? Got something good, as they say in the vernacular? Oh, I never get tips. Ah, but you win. Occasionally. Mm -hmm. What's your secret? What makes you think it's a secret? That was just a figure of speech. But let's talk about something else. Oh, what time is it? Hmm? Oh, 2.20, why? Thinking of leaving me so soon? No, but I have something to do around three. Oh, uh, important? To me, yes. I see. Well, shall we take a walk? Yes, I'd like to. Okay, that's it. So we walked. Terry was very charming. I was beginning to wonder about my hunch. Maybe it was luck after all. 
Then a few minutes after three. Dan, will you excuse me for a few minutes? Oh, you're important. Three o'clock. <laughs> That's it. I have to make a phone call. Want me to wait? Yes, if you want to. Oh, I do. I'll make it from this drugstore. All right. I'll, I'll wait right here. I won't be more than a few minutes. She went into the drugstore and straight to a phone booth. I slipped inside, went to a counter. The clerk came up to me. May I help you, sir? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Let me see a pair of those binoculars, will you? These? Uh, uh, they're not very good, except for children, just toys. Oh, I like to play with toys. <laughs> May I see a pair? Certainly. Here you are. Thanks. If you point them outside, you'll get a better idea of what they'll do. Oh, I'm getting a good idea right here. Excuse me, I'll be right back, sir. Uh-huh. I watched Miss Terry Vaughn in that phone booth. The binoculars weren't very good, but I saw the numbers she dialed and remembered them. She spoke for a few seconds, hung up, dropped another coin and dialed another number. I got that one, too. Then the clerk came back. They work all right, sir? Oh, they're marvelous, just marvelous. Uh, how much are they? Two ninety-five. Uh, here you are. Shall I wrap them? Got any kids? Huh? I mean, uh, why, yes. Well, here's a present for them. But... You just bought them. Well, you see, I like your kids. You take these. But, but, sir, I, uh, I can't take these. Uh, or can I? I walked back outside and got to the pavement before Terry Vaughn finished her second phone call. I was standing there when she came well, out. Well, there we are. All set. Make your call, all right? Yes. Now, how'd you like to see the town? I'd love it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> We spent a pleasant afternoon, but my mind wasn't on my work. I was trying to keep those phone numbers straight in my head. Then Terry had to go to the club for rehearsal. As soon as she left me, I headed for a phone booth and dialed the first number she'd called. Hello? Hello, Bill? Bill, what number do you want? Is Bill there? Uh, there's no bill here. I'm sorry. You're sure there's no bill there? No, uh, you got a wrong number, bud. Wrong number, huh? Maybe, maybe not. I dialed the second number she'd called. Hello? Hello, who's this? Hendricks. Who's that? Hendricks. This is Holiday. Holiday. What's up? Listen, did Terry Vaughn place a bet this afternoon? Yeah, on the fourth. Did she win? Look, she was with me when she made the bet. You heard her make it? No, she was in a phone booth. Was that the only bet she made? That was enough. How many winners did you have in that race? Six of the other 20 people had the winner. How about the other races? Third, fourth, and fifth. All winners among the 20 people. Uh-huh. You got the gimmick? Eh, uh, maybe. But I've got to prove it. Listen, just sit tight, Bert. Don't open your mouth, don't let out a peep, and above all, don't try to see me. But, Dan, if you know anything, please... I don't know whether I know anything or not, but I'll find out tomorrow at the track. Later that evening, I made a purchase, a very important one. Then I called Terry Vaughn and asked her to go to the track with me the next day. It took a little persuasion, but she finally said yes. So the next afternoon, with my purchase in the pocket of my top coat, Miss Vaughn and I went to the track. And up in the stands... Do you know, Dan, this is the first time I've been here this season. Oh, I thought you liked racing. Oh, I do, but... Well, being at the track makes me nervous. Nervous? Why? Oh, no reason at all. Uh, which horse do you like in this race? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to bet. Oh, now, with your luck? <laughs> I don't want to force it. I see. Well, I don't blame you. Why don't you go ahead and bet? Mm. All right, you pick a horse for me. Think my luck will rub off on you? Uh, could be. Go ahead. Pick one. Well, let's see. How does this one sound? Bright Angel. Bright Angel it is. In the third. It's almost post time. Uh-huh. Well, these are good seats. Mm, yes, they are. I reached in my pocket and took out the important purchase I had made the previous evening and started to unwrap it. What's that, Dan? Oh, I just bought this, a portable radio. I wonder if I can hear the race on it. Don't turn that on. But why not? Put down that radio, Mr. Holiday. Put it why, down. Why don't you want me to turn it on? You're just a little too smart, Mr. Holiday. This is a gun in my purse. You're getting out of here. Go on. I carry radios. You carry guns. Hmm. You're well equipped. Go on. Lead the way. Huh? Okay. She was as cool as an Arctic winter, and she handled the gun nicely, 
kept it in the small of my back under her handbag. Somehow I knew she'd use it if she had to. We got to her car, and a half hour later, she marched me into a room where a man sat wearing a pair of headphones. He looked up as we came in. Ah, hello, Terry. Who's this? A smart boy, Tim. I'm leaving him with you. Smart boy? Mm Mm-hmm. He's wise. How he got that way, I don't know. But after the fifth race cleanup, we're leaving town. Well, it's about time. We couldn't run this racket forever. You know, Mr. Holliday, you're lucky you didn't come along sooner. Yes, I know. Before you made your take. That's right. How did you figure it? Through a 295 pair of binoculars. I saw the numbers you dialed yesterday. Oh. You should be with us. Hmm. Let's see. That thing there is a wire recorder. You tap into the broadcast line that runs from the track to the radio station without the station's knowledge. You record the broadcast, then play it back into the broadcast line. Two minutes after the regular airtime. You are smart. And those two minutes give you enough time to place bets on sure things. You already know the winners, but the bookmakers don't. Correct. But you only pull this on the middle three races of the card, so that latecomers and those who leave the track early won't catch wise by listening to their radios. Right again. The broadcast is delayed two minutes. The race is already over before the bookmakers even think it started. Sit down, Mr. Holliday. Watch him, Tim. Yeah, okay. I'm going to clean up a few odds and ends. Goodbye, Mr. Holliday. Oh, we'll see each other again. Oh, I doubt that very much. Goodbye. And be very happy that some of my luck did rub off on you. <laughs> smart dame, smart dame. Nose angles. Yes, I can see that. Yeah, we make a take here and then move on. Now, you just sit still, bub. I got some work to do, but uh, I can still watch you. I watched him, too. The wire recorder was spinning. He flipped a switch, and I knew what happened. The third race at the track was over, but the broadcast of it was going over the air now. Two minutes later. Then... Uh, now, now, we sit tight for a while. Say, that wire recorder, I've never seen one before. Uh-huh. Great gadgets, yeah. Great. <laughs> I make recordings of my own voice all the time. Oh? You mean all you do is talk into that little microphone and your voice is recorded right away? Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you, uh, you want to say something? Hey, you're obliging. Oh, sure, anything to pass the time. It gets dull in here. Go on, say something, and we'll play it back for you. Go on. Well, what'll I say? Oh, anything. First thing comes to your mind. Well, my name is Dan Holliday. I'm being held prisoner at 758 Condo Street at the point of a gun. Please help. Oh, 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 great. Just great. (laughs) Don't you wish someone on the outside could really hear that? Yeah, I guess I do. Now, you mean that thing will play it right back, huh? Sure. I just got to switch from the record to playback, that's all. He turned his back for a second, flipped a switch. I flipped a switch, too, and waited. Well, my name is Dan Holliday... I'm being held prisoner at 758 Condo Street at the point of a gun. Please help. (laughs) See? That's all there is to it. Well, well, well. What do you know about that? Isn't science wonderful? Yeah, sure is. (laughs) Too bad you had to come along and spoil this racket, mister. But I guess we made a big enough take and... Keep your hands up, mister. I can shoot and answer the phone at the same time. Yeah? Tim, what happened? Happened? Nothing. Why? The guy is Listen, still... Listen, get out of there fast and take him with you. We'll take care of him later, but get out of there fast. Hey, Terry! T- uh, Terry! Something wrong? I don't know. Get up and move out. Go on. I did. But I did something else first. We walked out of the place, a gun in my ribs. I hoped what I'd done would work. We walked up the street a piece, and then... That's cops. All right. Duck in here. Go on. In this hallway. Ah, just keep quiet and let him go past. (laughs) Guess they won't find nobody there, will they? No, I guess not. Well, what now? Well, wait for a minute and we go. All right. Now get in front of me and stay there. Go on. Drop that gun. What? What? Who? 
Better drop it. There's a lot of cops. Oh, okay, okay. Don't shoot. Dan. Dan Halliday. You all right? Sure, Hendricks. Did you hear my broadcast? Yeah. Your voice cut in right in the middle of the regular broadcast. Huh? I don't get it. I don't get it. How'd they find us? How'd they trail us? Oh. <laughs> Look on your coattail, Tim. You didn't know it, but when we left that room, I hooked the end of the wire from the recorder on your coat. You see, Tim, you were wired for sound. Gee, that sure was a clever idea they had, Mr. Holliday. Uh-huh. And you were clever, too. That wire left a trail right to you and that man. Yeah, he was wired for sound, Susie. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, and I'll bet you got a racy story out of it. Uh, what, Susie? No, oh, don't you get it, Mr. Holliday? I made a joke. Racy story. <laughs> get it? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Good night, Susie. <laughs> Next week, same time, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, with this week's original story by Robert M. Light and Mr. Sandville. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. Part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker, and production is supervised by Vern Carstensen. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd and his latest Paramount picture.